G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now this I've looked at before, it's the uh, Walkera RBO, ABO, it was called the Airbot but they changed the name, it's the RBO or something now, here it is, and it's actually not a bad bit of kit from the, you know, from a sort of constructional point of view, it's quite robust, I like the plastic mouldings and everything, I did pan it because it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, Walkera have made something that's really good but it's just not a good thing to make in terms of this augmented reality setup where they're trying to turn flying a drone into a video game and it's just no good it's just uh, the problem is that if you're flying you should be focused on flying not on playing a game if you want to race through gates get a racing mini quad it's as simple as that uh, if you want to chase tokens around the thing get yourself a computer game it's kind of like the Pokemon Go of drone flying but Pokemon Go is nearly dead anyway, it was a bit of a fad, it just didn't have the longevity, so by tying themselves to this augmented reality, making it into a drone based Pokemon Go, well care have shot themselves in the foot a bit, because once the fad's gone, it's gone, and what do you do with your drone then, because this one doesn't take video, it's got a camera, but it won't take video, it has a space for a, a TF card in here, but I put a TF card in, no way will it take pictures, or video, so, oh come on seriously, I actually think, and I'm going to be totally honest here, I reckon this would be a great competitor, for the Karma or the Mavic Pro, if it was done at the right price point, because it's small, it flies quite well, I've done some more flying with it, and it is actually a nice little quad to fly, it really does sort of handle quite well, it's quite fast, it would be a great little thing, and because of the size of it, you know, and it has a good flight duration, I got over 20 minutes out of a battery, this could be a Mavic Pro Karma competitor at the at a different price point you'd have to bring it down to about your six hundred dollars you'd have to make the camera work with its 4k video you might want to look at putting a gimbal underneath it just in case i don't know but you know walkera have targeted in my opinion the wrong market young people um, for a start you know they're going to need um to buy this thing and then use their smartphone and oh, i just don't think the fad will wear off no one's going to invest this much money in just a little fad thing but they will invest it in a useful drone that does the job of creating really good video being fun to fly and you know it's something you can throw in your backpack so hmm. but what i'm going to do today is not look at all those things i'm going to look inside i'm going to see whether the quality construction that appears to be from the outside is also inside because we've had some build quality issues with wall care in the past have they turned over a new leaf is this really a good quality product inside as well as out well, let's take the covers off and find out. Well, the first thing I notice is this could be a bit of a mission. There are a hell of a lot of screws holding this thing together. This is um, probably why it feels so rigid and nice. We've got two screws under each motors here just for the little cover which has it covers the LEDs. There are a couple of screws in each arm here which seem to hold the halves together. Then we've got a screw at the base of each arm there. We've got one, two screws there. Um, yeah. And, of course, this cover's probably going to have to come off because there'll be screws under there. There's a lot of work in pulling this apart, so I'm not going to film it all. I'll just cut to the chase. I'll do it. Jump cut time. Okay, hang on. There's something really strange going on here. Now, this is the underside. I've taken some screws out. Now, and I thought, hey, look, fantastic. It's got ultrasonic altitude ranging. But if you take this off, there's just a circuit board here. There's no ultrasonic transducers. Um... There's, there is no ultrasonic. What the hell's going on here? What is, what are these for? If they're not, if there's no ultrasonic sound coming through, this is kind of, yeah, it's a bit how you go. It looks a bit deceptive to me. I don't know. I didn't check the. I just assumed there was ultrasonic ranging. I'm going to go back and look at the specifications for this craft because there ain't no ultrasonic ranging coming out of there. I'm going to have a look at that daughter board and this little board here and see what is actually on it. Right now, here's the little board that. Uh, well, that's the base board there, but there's another daughter board fits on the top here. And this is interesting. Um, this has an Ethernet controller, a gigabit Ethernet controller chip here, and some power supply circuitry here. So this is certainly not ultrasonic ranging. It's to do with the networking of the whole setup. And let's just pull out a bit and have a look at where that fits on the system. Excuse me while it goes blurry with my camera, and it refocus. Here we go. Yeah, so this board sits upside down on here. Through that, and that flat flex cable provides connectivity to over here where we have the um, SD card, micro SD card and so forth and there's a, another cable out here which goes off, that looks like a camera cable, I think that goes off to the front here where the camera is installed, so that's where the camera cable comes in and this is the Ethernet uh, thing, I'm not quite sure what the bottom board is, I had a bit of a look because this may be setting up Ethernet for the Wi-Fi connection back to the 
transmitter. Yes, I can see underneath this board here there is a can. You can probably see it under that metal strip under there. That's obviously the Wi-Fi transmitter. So what this board effectively is doing is taking our, I think probably taking our camera signal through the little cable that runs off to there and turning it into an Ethernet connection which then goes onto this which is our Ethernet or our Wi-Fi transmission board. So that's basically just sending our camera signal down to the transmitter. So there's no ranging stuff in there at all. So why on earth it has those ultrasonic ranging type holes, I don't know. Okay, here we go. We're gazing down the guts of this thing, right down the battery tray at the back. And one thing you'll notice immediately is the camera's on the piss. Look at it. It's tilted clockwise by quite a few degrees. That's going to make the video look really crap because the, when you, you won't be able to, you know, when you're looking flying level, it's going to look like it's already tilted over. It's, it's a small thing, but there's these small things that make the difference between a product you can really love and a product that gets on your nerves. And okay, this was a pre-production unit, but uh, if you're going to send a product to someone to review, make sure it, you've got, you know, you've put it together properly. This is just not good enough, I'm afraid. Now, I don't know whether I should continue with this tear down because I've taken all the screws out of here, out of the round there, and I can pry the back up here with my spudger, but there's a couple of catches just under here, and I'm probably going to end up breaking them to take the top off. And I, I don't know whether I want to break it. I mean, what am I going to find in there? I'm going to find a GPS receiver under here i'm going to find the flight controller which i have a feeling is just an apm just an 8-bit apm i don't think it's anything special uh, there's no as i say no ultrasonic on there that was a big disappointment i was really hoping that by having ultrasonic this was going to be a really cool little thing it does explain why it doesn't do its altitude hold very well i was surprised that it was starting to dip down in altitude hold i thought hmm what's going on here maybe it's the surface i'm flying over but no it's just because vertical resolution with gps is not very good so you're always going to get a few meters up and down which means if you're trying to fly this thing as they recommend and you're trying to fly through hoops or hit coins or something and you're close to the ground you're going to crash you're going to crash it maybe that's the goal to sell lots of spare parts but having said that the fact that it's so damn hard to get apart it's not really user serviceable anyway so it's like a use it smash it throw it away and that's okay if it's a 25 dollars drone but it's not it's quite an expensive piece of kit which is why i thought they would target it at the Karma and the Mavic Pro market because to be honest if they had bought this out as a competition to for example the the Karma imagine how much money they'd be making now because all those Karmas are flying back to DJI and they've been removed from the market and people have got a taste of it well they'd have the choice of buying the Mavic Pro from DJI or buying something like this from Walkera which would be a hell of a lot cheaper but may do the same job except Walkera you chose the wrong market and unfortunately your quality control still lets you down i mean i'm going to take another look in here let's go back to the macro lens uh, the macro view and i'll show you you know because one of the worst points of walkera stuff has been the soldering the manual soldering let's take a look at this now i'm hoping it's going to focus in here but look at the with those red wires are soldered look at how appalling that is now this is a pre-production but as i say if you're going to take a pre-production unit you're going to send it to someone like myself who reviews things quite closely that's not what you send them right that's just not what you send somebody and I, I don't know that it would be any different in production and look at that little connector beside that that's not really even firmly come on focus that's not even firmly really seated in its connection in its socket so oh really i mean yeah i just i really was trying to get enthusiastic about this craft i really was is that one seated as well it's hard to get come on focus yeah they all seem a little bit out of connection so just waiting for a decent crash and then they fall out and the consumer finds hey my drone's buggered it won't fly anymore um so i i was so keen to be enthused about this craft i really wanted it to be something that i could say hey it's pretty cool but no nah, it's not it's just it's walkera it's walkera they haven't learned anything they make the prettiest looking thing plastic's lovely lovely plastic beautiful even these little design motifs here really nice three-bladed prop you know and all that. oh that's really clever the way they've made those three-bladed props into a motif on the side but for goodness sake, if it doesn't take any video like this doesn't, if it doesn't take any pictures like this doesn't, if it doesn't even fly as well as it should because there's no ultrasonic ranging, then why would anyone waste their money on it? Well, Kara, you really just need to go back to the drawing board. You need to consult with people who can help you in your design. First of all, establish your target market. Decide what you're going after. Chasing a very transient game market like the Pokemon Go market, that's just a waste of time. How many tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars of R&D went into developing this thing and you're not going to sell any you really aren't because
the, t the target market is gone. No one plays Poke Pokemon Go anymore. It's a fad. It's gone. So why are they going to play it with a drone? And you missed the gaping, the glaring hole, the ability to run right in and fill the hole that the recalled karma has produced. Because this doesn't take video. And also, I mean, the QC is just not there. So there you go. Now, I could rip the top off here, as I say, um, break a couple of tabs, but I don't know if it's even worth it. You tell me in the, in, in the comments on this video. Tell me if you'd like me to go further in the teardown, because it took me half an hour to get those bloody screws out, and it got me nowhere. So I'm just going to put this back in the box. It'll probably, I may actually just screw it all back together, and it may be uh, something I give away to one of my Patreon supporters for whatever purpose they want to put it to. Yeah, in the meantime, I don't know. So there you go. Tell me what to do. And I will do my best to do it. In the meantime, if you've got questions, comments, anything at all, and we'll care if you're watching, um, hey, I'd be glad to help you out. And all those aspects, design of the, or selecting a target market, designing, and trying to sort your quality control out. Maybe you could produce something that people would be proud to own. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.